So uh, welcome back to the channel. This um, dehumidifier is run most days in the winter to extract water from the air to reduce the humidity basically which in turn will reduce the black spot mold on the walls. So we're having a bit of black spot mold appearing behind beds and areas where there's not much air circulation. We do have a thermostat up here for controlling the temperature but um, you know when we've got it on 18 there are bits of uh, mould appearing in walls where the ventilation is a bit limited. Not sure if you can see that but down there there's a little black spot there. Um, we've been keeping it under control with the dehumidifier um, but before it was a lot bigger than that and we've just been spraying bleach on it but it's a constant battle. So what I've decided to do is uh, by a Ventaxia silent fan. Now the silent fan by Ventaxia has a 12 decibel noise, which is equivalent to some rustling leaves. So um, as it's upstairs, it's near the bedrooms, so I'm gonna put it on the landing. And um, that's, what I was, that's why I bought the quiet one. But you know, if it was in a kitchen or a bathroom, it really wouldn't matter. I do have extractors and opening windows, but the heat, the, the warm air comes upstairs and sort of hangs in the bedrooms. We've got two opening windows upstairs, but um, it's pretty airtight since uh, we haven't got any open chimneys. It's an older house and uh, the walls aren't that well insulated. So uh, the humid, humid air is touching those walls and as you just saw, you know, can cause that black spot mold. But we just don't want any humidity up here. So uh, I'm going to install this. So with another extractor fan, um, I've got two end bits, which is a sleeve that goes for designed for going through the wall. And I've stuck them on either end of a uh, tumble dryer, one meter flexi pipe. I then uh, use some cable ties to cable tie the vent pipe onto either end of the sliding through wall pipe. And then I duct tape them on and then I use some PIR joining tape to uh, strengthen the um, tumble dryer pipe because I didn't want that getting punctured. As well as that, the PIR tape is, uh, has limited insulation uh, features. So hopefully the water, the humid air won't condense within the pipe as it goes into the loft. An SDS 100 mil boring hole, which is a similar size to that. So hopefully we'll put a hole for into the chimney breast because I can't vent to the eaves due to the type of roof that I have. And then a hole in the ceiling with this where my vent axia will fit. So the silent fan that I have is the vent axia VASF so VA is vent axia, SF is silent fan, 100 HT, which is humidistat and timer. So you can wire it up to the light switch so it comes on and then runs. And then as well as that, it can just run on the for humidity. You can just get the timer one as well. But the humidity one, if it becomes humid, it will come on and off. I'm going, to, I'm going to permanently wire that in with no isolation switches so it can't be turned off. So I've gone up in the loft and this is the corner of the chimney breast here. And I'll put some sheeting down to catch the rubbish. I've chosen this location because it's at the top of the stairs um, and near the chimney breast. I don't want it too far from the chimney breast due to the length of the pipe and I don't want the humid air condensing in the pipe. Typical. We found a ceiling joist right in the way. Okay. So there's the first hole and the ceiling joist there and then of course the hole next to it has got another ceiling joist 
so I've gone right in the middle. So it looks like I've got to do some <laughs> repairs. I'll just get a piece of plasterboard and uh, drill out a hole exactly the same size and then stick it in and then skim over. Well, there we go. <clears throat> it's a thatch property. And make sure we get the right way round. That's a nice tight fit. So yeah, that way round. And I push that under the loft. And there we go. So I've got to find the other end now. It's somewhere in that mess. And there we go. So I pull that over and see where that reaches before I drill the hole to go into the chimney. So normally you'd feed the vent somewhere on the eaves where the ventilation is, but we don't have any eaves on this property. That's a bit tight, but... So I hammered the crown off so I could get the core, core drill in further. So the crown of the core has been smashed off so I can get the, the bit in further. So the hole is getting deeper. That's quite a few bricks, so. So we've broken through. I'll get my endo scoop or borer scoop and we'll poke that in and have a look. So here I'm using my borer scope to check to see if the um, chimney is capped off or not. So um, if I stick it in the hole and then point it up, we should get a um, chink of light coming through from the chimney. And there we go. There's the chink of light at the top. So, yeah, it's vented to the outside. Into the chimney. And we verified that the chimney, this, because it could be split into four, uh, that this opening has got a... Um, a hole at the top so any moisture can escape so this chimney hasn't been capped so we can put the pipe in I got some uh, fireproof acrylic not that it should make much difference because the chimneys aren't in use and uh, oh my god we wouldn't want to have an open fire going so um, I'm going to put the acrylic around here Get rid of this dust first. Put a squidge in here, all around there, and push it in. And then it'll be sealed to the chimney breast. So I had some of this left over from uh, doing a fuse board. Um, intermittent acrylic, and it's uh, resistant to fire and smoke. So uh, good thing to use, but it is an air vent and uh, well, we're not going to light an open fire because all the open chimneys are blocked. So we've got a generous amount on there. So we've got a roll of lighting cable and then uh, poked it up. Here's the end. And I'm just going to Bring it round to my nearest uh, life supply. Going up. So I'm um, just going to go and turn the lights off at the board and then sort of open up that supply and then connect that up. Okay, live, neutral, and live switched. So no need for the earth. And then there's a spirit level with a bubble in case you're maintaining it vertical. 
but mine's in mine horizontal. And then here, if you turn it to the left, it's more sensitive. And if you turn it to the right, it's less sensitive. And then you've got under here, you have some jumpers, not connected, low speed, connected, high speed, and then two in, no timer. So that's what I've got it set to, low speed, 12 decibels. So I'll put some more acrylic on just to give it a purchase. It's all wired up, I'm gonna push it into place and then I'll stick in the four Phillips screws. Never good screwing into lath and plaster, but uh, yeah, it's up. I've got the screws in and the cover on. Now the other cover. Now these have got little lugs. Now when I got it, these lugs were broken, so I've repaired them, but be careful, they're very delicate. So it's working. That background noise is the dehumidifier. I've just turned it off. And that's the 12 decibel fan running. Now to tidy up these. So what I've done is found some spare plasterboard and then uh, cut these out with the bore hole drill and I'm gonna stick them in place. So I've put the first skim of plaster or filler over the top of the plasterboards that I've put in there. I just need to sand that, put another coat on, sand it again and then paint it. And we should be done. The fan isn't running at the moment because I've adjusted it down and um, the humidistat reading is uh, reading at 63%, which is well below my target maximum of 70. So uh, there you go. Yeah, it's all working. Don't forget to uh, have a look at the description because all the links are in there and like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.